but we went across the start of the marsh and really one of the things I really noticed was just how much water dock uh, there was uh, there. It was just a complete mass on that first part of the water dock in fruit on that first part. But as you mentioned, it, there was also a lot of wormwood Artemisia absinthium along that first stretch there. Uh, but you can see on that left hand photograph, you can see across the Welsh coast. Um, but you got the contrast of the uh, grazed and mown area and then the sort of the pathway and then onto the salt marsh. You get a range of habitats in a very small area there. Uh, we mentioned the slender thistle. Uh, some of them looked rather like the slender thistle did in the book, some didn't, which is why we deliberated for some time on that really. Um, well, this is one of the regular sites for white whorehound, the Merubium, um, quite distinctive and it's historically it's been there for quite some time. So it's a plant, if you go to that area, you're likely to see quite distinctive and uh, nationally not that really common, not common particularly at all really. Uh, same applies to the henbane. Um, this is a regular site that has been known for many, many years at this site. Uh, you can see the flowers and the uh, fruit, fruiting body. Um, but this is looking sort of north, so you can see the Wirral coast there. You can see where the, the, um, the plants are there and the, the discussion on them. Um, but further along, we had, a, again, it's quite a mix of habitats. So where there was disturbance, there was the common poppy. Um, in the wetter areas, there was the uh, greater willow herb. Um, and on a wall where the, the sheep pen was, there was rat tails fescue to be found with that sort of strange edging to the, to the uh, fruit bodies. The musk thistle, um, this is one site we see, see, uh, saw it, but of course there was one plant in the city centre uh, this year, which is unusual for, as a, for a city centre site, but there was quite a few, there's about a dozen musk thistle here at Burton. Um, Burton Point, is, of course, is, a, is, a, is a, as mentioned, is, is, is this red sandstone, uh, but you can't actually get onto the site because it's an Iron Age fort and earthworks, so a lot of it is actually fenced off as an ancient monument. Uh, but you can see the strata, the layers of the, the rock here, and of course, we're talking around about 220, 230 million year old rocks. And it's from a sort of period when, uh, where Britain was, is, was roughly where the Sahara is today. So there were the sort of conditions. We can see the layering effect there. And of course, that has a knock on effect on what plants are to be found in that area. Um, this one we had quite a bit of discussion on. There were certainly probably two and possibly a hybrid of these bindweeds. Um, along this stretch. Um, but again, like so many plants with hybrids, it can be difficult to work these things out. Um, we had the lunch on the left area there by uh, Erden Point. On this stretch, we've got the uh, rifle range. You can see the industry of the, the uh, Welsh Dee further on there. We've got the marsh fresh on the left hand side and salt on the right hand side. Um, botanizing from the uh, boardwalk was very good, as Peter mentioned, the whole range of things. But also, it's of course adjacent to this is the RSP reserve. A lot of this area is the RSPB and it's uh, managed as nature reserves. Um, the trip to High Town on was mentioned high tide, we got the roost there. And this year, it was a massive uh, roost of sandwich turn up to about uh, probably 5,000 sandwich turn as well. Uh, but botany wise, I mentioned the seafaring grass, which was an unusual location being under a tree, uh, halfway between the station and the, and the coast. On the left, we've got a, a variety of the, uh, just the ordinary field bindweed, but has this interesting pink in a, in a ring on it. Um, but it was quite a range of habitats from the dune, the salt marsh and the strand line. This year has been particularly good both here and further north at Ainsdale, the Strand Line, and even at Cabin Hill and Forby has been really excellent this year. Um, as I mentioned, we start off with this, things like the sea acid and the very muddy 
exit of the uh, River Alt. Of course, we've got reed beds on both sides as well. So there's a whole range of uh, maritime habitats in that first part. Uh, on, on the peat bed, uh, we found some traces that we think could be royal fern. We so we're around about probably three, four thousand years old. On the top right there, we can see the, the layers of that. But there's also there's the oak and there's various other things within that. Um, and also the parts of the strand line. On the actual visits, I don't know if anyone else saw the frosted oreg. I said any stories when I was there, but I don't think uh, how many others did. But again, shows just how good a year it was um, for the strand line plants. A whole range of things. The Sierra grass was, was still in fruit. Uh, the sea bind wine of course wasn't in fruit at that point uh, but one of the noticeable features was the um, the maritime form of the um, kel, uh, kel dock litorius the whether it's a variety or whether it's a subspecies but it's very distinctive on this this particular habitat sea rockets in close up the top left there the white crucifer flowers various evening primroses very difficult to work out whether they're a species or the hybrid as well Carline thistle, as mentioned, was another species, but only one plant was all I saw on, on that day. Uh, things like tansy, the top left there, the yellow, um, in, as we go from the alt centre down to the alt. Again, originates almost certainly in the gardens, both the tansy and also the pink of the double form of the soapwort. I mentioned about the sea aster. Um, it's doing quite well on that bend of the alt, really. Uh, but also on the strand line top right is the uh, raised knotgrass with those big flowers and the big uh, black uh, nutlets. Uh, Pete mentioned about the, the bits of fragments of the, um, the peat breaking up. And on that image on the, the bottom left, you can see the, um, the uh, water crowfoot, a member of the, the ranunculus. And... Uh, it stands out very much against that peat background. I've also got sea milkware, sea perstain. There's a good range of salt marsh plants to be found on, on this area of Thai Town. Twiggy Spurge has been there for at least 30 years, again, probably of garden origin. Um, middle top is the um, seaweed, sometimes called intestine weed, because it has uh, air bubbles within it to, to make it float. But... It's very common where you get fresh water mixing with the, with the uh, seawater and at the base of the sailing club uh, it tends to dominate and across the peat bed as well. Um, the clustered dock, we mentioned about the sunflower growing on the strand line. Uh, sticky stalks bill was by the car park to the um, sailing club. But you can see the, see, see the peat beds there. It is gradually eroding away um, and also there was a few berries of the uh, jubilee in flower still. Uh, top left is the uh, toad rush, a little tiny annual, uh, tiny rush. Colts foot leaves, the close up of the sea club rush. Uh, one of the interesting plants uh, this year for the high tone salt marsh between the sea club rush and the dunes was some long bracted sedge. It's been known for some time, places like Ainsdale. Uh, but that was to be found here as well. You can see the long bracts on the top photographs there. Just distinguish that species. Carrick extensia. Uh, but also you got quite a range of plants in, in this, the edge. But of course this area was actually had sand moved from Crosby to this place, a high town. Um, but a lot of it is eroded away. So you've got quite a steep bank. But it's, it's amazing how many plants are coming into this area, very narrow area. And some of them include things like some of the uh, freshwater plants. So we've got um, angelica, wild angelica uh, leaves. What's basically at the base of a sand dune, quite a, an interesting habitat for that particular plant. Uh, top left, we mentioned the Isle of Man cabbage. Um, between probably High Town and Waterloo is probably the vast majority of the world population of that particular species. Very common. Um, Crosby and a, a, an area of high town dunes just above, uh, just above the salt marsh is doing quite nicely. There's certainly a couple of thousand plants. Sea holly is doing well. 
And in the intergrade between the dunes and the rubble, we get a lot of the uh, kidney vetch in the last few years, the whole area has been yellow with the flowers and here we see it in seed. Um, we've got the wild onion or crow garlic. This is one of the ones where half the plant had flowers and half the plant had the little bulbuls. And even the tiny little um, poplar trees can have a lichen flora, uh, at least two species of lichens on that one. Uh, as was mentioned, Ben saxifrage is an umbel, not a bernet or a saxifrage, um, but both in flower and in seed. And the, on the marsh area, you get the uh, sea milkwort. Uh, bottom right, we've got the uh, perennial sow thistle. The white willow tree had lots of these bingles caused by a wasp, Pontania proxima. And we mentioned about the cord grass as well. Uh, but strangely, through the uh, reed bed, uh, there's this uh, group of uh, garden angel angelica, which again, uh, Vera Gordon knew so 20, 30 years ago, but it's still hanging on there. But again, it's presumably of garden origin, but it seems quite a strange habitat, this reed bed edge, but it's still doing quite nicely. Um, there's certainly probably at least three types of glassware to be found on high town salt marsh. Uh, one I had a close look at was long stalked side of the coast here. Um, of course, being a sea area, we've got sea aster, sea rocket, and uh, sea mayweed also to be found along that stretch. Here we can see one of the oaks, the three or four thousand year old oaks. Um, but also along the strand line here, we've got things like raised knotgrass, polygonum, uh, quite distinctive. Once you get your eye in for that, it's fairly distinctive. Uh, but in the debris of the strand line, there was this big tyre. It was like a little gar mini garden inside it, growing quite nicely. and felt relatively sheltered for, the, for this part of the coast inside that tyre. Um, quite a range of species. We've got the bear marigolds. Again, it's really a freshwater thing, but where the freshwater seeps out of the dunes uh, down through to the edge uh, of the salt marsh, we're getting plants like that and the watercress and the wild celery. And what we take, even though it wasn't actually in flower, we take to be orange balsam and patience capensis. Onto the rubble, um, we've got the rock samphire, which of course is edible, but I don't know if anyone eats it along this stretch of the coast. There's not that much of it, only probably about 30 plants in total. Um, bottom left, we've got harebell, that one not quite in flower. Uh, we saw eyebright, and one I checked seems to be nemorose, but not exactly easy, Euphrasius. And um, plenty of sea holly along that stretch as well. So there's a real interesting range of plants to be found there. There's the, the seed heads of the uh, yellow horn poppy and the greyish leaves. And it was still in flower quite late, but there was one nicely in flower. But you can see how much rain there'd been <laughs> on the flowers there. Uh, we also got vipers bugloss, the bu and also the common grumwell that was mentioned. You can see those white seed pods quite nicely. At the end, we uh, on the salt marsh, the edge of the salt marsh, there's a pink form of the bindweed. There's a bit of discussion on whether it really was Calistegia sapium subspecies roseata, but that's what's been recorded as, as for years, and we've assumed that's what it is. But interesting plant might be worth looking at a bit more closely again. As was mentioned, Lisa was on the uh, 4th of September, led by John Crowder. Um, mentioned about various things like butterflies, so there's a small copper. About big things, Zorak, we did see it's the high town as well, but here's a close up view of the uh, seeds of that. There's one, a couple of patches of field scabious still in flower, which was quite nice. And Tony Carter was with that one and found this smut of on the Xanthoria, this a fungus growing on the fungus and algae that form the lichen. So uh, all sorts growing on that little tiny patch there. The sea buckthorn, the, the orange berries, and the Liso lighthouse, which you can see across from the, uh, the Mays the Lipol side as well. A whole range of plants um, at the entrance. So things like uh, the prickly lettuce, the uh, edge mustard, privet, the uh, Buxhorn plantain, the blue flowers of the green alkanet, 
and was a plum in fruit. And the Alexanders, uh, of course, is an early spring flowering species, but by this stage in September, all you see is the black of the seed heads. Uh, the willows, the yellow spotting above gives it a rust underneath uh, that on that flower, uh, on that leaf. Uh, the flowers of the carrot had a little tiny gall midge on the tongue, forms these little tiny pink uh, galls growing on, on the uh, flower. And they're inhabited, of course, by the larva of the midge. Um, there's quite a few patches of that on the wild carrot at, Le at uh, Liso. Uh, we mentioned about the amount of lucerne in the various uh, colour varieties. Whatever the colour variety is, the bees like this um, common card, a bumblebee, uh, were loving that as well. Uh, there's a flower of the um, meadow cranes, build a nice blue geranium. Of course, we've mentioned about the uh, wetland areas, uh, but unfortunately, things like Himalayan balsam were starting to get in there. Uh, we saw quite a few uh, evening primrose, but again, getting them down to species or hybrid can be difficult. And the same also applies really to the white beam. Um, we thought it was Swedish initially, but uh, we're having setting second doubts on what actually that species was. Even for, for things like the mignonette, there was a bit of an argument whether it was weld or mignonette, but we decided it was uh, the mignonette. Uh, common stalks bill, uh, fairly frequent in that sort of June area. Pear's foot clover, you know, those fluffy seed heads was occasional, as with the seed heads of the hound's tongue, with those little hedgehog like seeds. But as you go further south towards Mel's, it opens into a, a proper June situation. So you get things like the rest harrow, but also ruderals like the common mallow. Again, there was more Bernet saxifrage in flower. There was the yellow of the common toe flax. And we've also got a pale white form of the lucerne there as well. Um, along the seawall was very good for Babbitton Zorak. That was really common. There were patches of the yellow uh, flowers of the kidney vetch, sea rocket as well, the yellow cress. Um, there's also ruderals like the uh, Michaelmas daisies to be found along there. Uh, but this is the underside of the willow and it shows the uh, rust uh, underneath that. Um, but with rust and uh, also mildews and things, knowing the plant is one of the key uh, features of that. Once you know the plant, you're well on the way to working out what the mildew species, but if you've got an expert like Tony there, that'll help as well. Um, you've got small copper and common blue. The uh, goldenrod actually turned out to be the gigantia, the early goldenrod, not the Canada form, which is most of the books think, oh, that's the common species, but in many areas it is gigantia that tends to be the commonest species. Uh, the privet there was still in flower at this late, season. On the inner, inner edge of the dunes there's an absolute mass of Russian vine. It was actually a massive piece of Russian vine uh, that dom dominated the, the fence line of the inner edge. Um, there was honeysuckle, there was more evening primroses, the Michaelmas daisies. There was a large heath butterfly. Um, you never see small them. Heath. Hmm? Small, small heath. Yeah. Small <laughs> heath, sorry, yes, not large. It's small heath. You never see them really with the, the wings open, it's usually with the wings closed. The close up of the, the cat's tail. There was also um, Bennett. Um, Hold on. And close up of the, the Lucerne, the, the scary uh, seed heads. So there's a good range of species to be found. Ormskirk, um, from the city centre out to the rural areas. As was mentioned, um, quite a range of habitats. Top right, we've got Epicyphus bolgiatus, the marmalade hoverfly on nipplewort. But quite a range of different habitats from the, from the station to the bus stop to the arable fields, quite a range of things. This is the, the bus, uh, bus station and this big plant of, dominated by shaggy soldier. I did check it under the microscope, the, the, it is that, definitely that species. But, Usually it's extremely shaggy, you can see the top left there, it's very, very hairy, but it tends to be, certainly on the major side area, and seemingly in West Lanks, it's very much the dominant species. The gallant soldier, Gallant Soga, um, 
is actually relatively rare. It's mostly the shaggy soldier um, that's been to be found. Uh, Meadow Vetchling in the top left there, again, complete with its own uh, mildews as well. Uh, Black Whorehound was still in flower, as was Oxford Ragwort, the White Dead Nettle, the Ivy Leaf Toad Flax. So again, quite a few non-natives amongst the uh, natives in the cities, uh, in the town centre. Two colour forms of the heather, the field wound, woodwort, was also the cockspear grass as well, the polypodies, it was evening, um, uh, morning glory, again, presumably of um, garden origin. Uh, Pete mentioned the two uh, statues of the uh, giraffes, and there they are in someone's garden. <laughs> Uh, there's the white form, the, the borage, uh, quite unusual to see that's usually in the, the blue form. There's a white flowered variety. And of course, the church itself in, in Ormskirk is unusual having both a tower and a steeple. Um, the day we visited, of course, the uh, green, the flowers, Hellebreen was actually at the, had gone to, starting to go to seed. Um, by the railway station, there was mints, there was common nut grass, there was a whole range of things. We probably recorded about 120 species on the day, something like that, I would think. Um, there we are exploring the uh, orchid in, in the planted area. But also the seeds to be found as the uh, sticky ones of the, the burdock, the pimpernel, the procumbent, yellow sorrel, uh, nasturtium, roosterfina, the uh, garden plant. The liverwort was actually um, conicephalum conicum. It was very common along where the, 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 the brook was, is the uh, ditch on the concrete walls. So it was the commonest one there. And you can see that both the flower and the seeds heads of black medic. And at the railway station area, there was lots of sticky groundsel as it was across quite a bit of the town as well. A whole range of other things as well as the plants we were seeing. Um, the, uh, Norwegian maple was actually covered in mildew. It was, it was actually totally covered in the mildew. We got the nymphal form of the green shield bug, more of the uh, the uh, galls on the on the willow, the being galls of the sawfly. Um, it's amazing you can just go a few hundred meters out of Ormskirk and there's flocks of sheep there, seven spot ladybirds. Um, on the re bramble was the uh, Phragmidium, and it turned out to be Pragmidium violation, which you have to get under the microscope really to, to, to count to count up the uh, spore capsules to work out which one it was. Uh, we saw two buzzards overhead. It was nettle tap uh, moth really like loved the dandelions. There was a crow on the station. Um, the St John's wort I had to check under the microscope what mildew that was. The oaks had lots of mildews as well, as did the hembit uh, the nettle. So. It was really an excellent trip out for lots of mildews, ideal time of year, of course, for those. The final trip was at Dibbensdale. Um, of course, one of these sort of things is the, the Dibbon itself. Uh, of course, one of the dominant things about going to that site is the railway and the tunnel through it. As I mentioned, it's an ancient woodland with a whole range of things. There's the turkey tail, there's the uh, earth balls, deceivers, the ink caps, a whole range of species. Still haven't finished the list yet, but I'm working on it still. Um, but a whole range of habitats, there's the marsh, there's the ancient woodland, there's the seepages where the, the sandstone has been quarried. You get a massive liverwort on those. There's a whole range of different uh, things at that one site. There's uh, plants like the pendulous sedge, there are some of the sedges and rushes. And of course, it's one of the few sites on Mare's Sedge where you get the opposite leaf golden saxifrage. Um, not, of course, not in flower this time, but we go in the spring, it will, would be. A couple of geraniums out, the uh, Robert's yarn and the herb robert. The, it's still a patch um, of the uh, Pratensi, the meadow crane spill. A few types of Michaelmas uh, uh, daisy. Uh, as Pete mentions, uh, an excellent year for galls, especially the silk button gall. Like, looks like the silk button. That's absolutely masses everywhere of the oaks. Common spangle gall had pretty good uh, year as well. But in the bottom middle, you can see just how many 
gauze that were on the oaks there. But also, if you look on the beach, you might find a, a midge that causes this gall, Harticola annulipes, uh, was quite common on some of the beaches as well. A whole range of fungi. Uh, possibly the pick of them really was Jelly Baby, Leotia lubrica, under at the edge of the, the open grassland. For a whole range of things, the woodworts and the um, in caps, a whole range of things, tar, uh, tar uh, crust fungus as well. Uh, birch, polypore, birch uh, on the top left. The pipe club, um, we've seen at Freshfield as well as here at um, Dibbinsdale. Uh, fairy bonnets in, in large numbers, a whole range of things. But also things like uh, some of the liverworts, it was the endive, pelia, which has a quite a distinctive shape to it. Uh, there was a few green horsetails, there was the kind of cephalum conicum as well. So it had a range of different species. So overall, pretty good year of uh, trips.